Hello, welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. Today I thought we'd look at the View menu. Now I do have a video going over the View menu uh, previously. However, the View menu looks a lot different now than it did back then. So I thought I would do a bit of a addendum video going over things that have changed or have been updated since then. So I'm not going to go over the things I already went over in that video. Please feel free to check out the little eye uh, icon in the top right corner of the screen to look at the original uh, video going over the view menu and seeing those older features that are still available and are have not changed. We do have some green highlighted uh, elements of the view menu that are new to this version of Maya, Maya 2017 as of this recording. So we will get to those uh, along with the other things I have updated since that video. First and foremost is lock camera. That's a novel feature. <laughs> it's been very common in the past that you're working in your scene and you just accidentally uh, use the camera that you're trying to frame your scene with to go look at something and then you've noticed that, oh man, I've messed up my angle. I gotta go find it again. So lock camera is a very nice tool. You can just click it there. You can use also a little button here. You can turn lock camera on and off right through here. Uh, so whenever I try to rotate or pan or whatever it is, I no longer can do that because my camera has been locked. So I can frame my scene with my camera and lock it. And then if I accidentally try to go and zoom in and look on, look at something else, it won't let me. I, it will remind me, oh, oh yeah, this camera is locked. Let me go make a new camera to go look at something else. So lock camera is a very useful feature. Create camera from view. So what this essentially means is if I, let's, let's actually put something in the scene here. Let's say I get this cube object, and I want to, if, if I go and frame something the way I like it, let's say this is some really complex piece of geometry and not just a simple cube. So if I have my, my cube just framed just the way I like it, let me actually open the outliner here, also be a little bit helpful. So right now you can see my camera's perspective, top, front, and side, and in my cube. So I have my cube framed just the way I want it. And I say, let's just say, for example, I want a camera looking at this cube just like this, and I'm going to create a new camera with this view. So create camera from view, click it. You'll notice immediately I have perspective one has been added, a new camera. So there's perspective and then perspective one. And if I go to view, select camera right now, you'll notice I'm actually looking through perspective one. So what it did, it created a new camera facing the same angle I was looking at before, but also it switched to that camera. So if you do like this view and you want to keep it, you can say, all right, now lock the camera, go back to panels, perspective. You see I have my perspective one. You might want to rename that to like, you know, camera view or, or render camera, whatever you want to call it. I can switch back to my original perspective camera and then I can look, oh, there it is, my new camera that was created from the view. It's a very handy little feature. Typically people like to have a working camera that they can use to look around their scene and a different camera that they're actually used to render from uh, that is locked. Now one thing that is a little confusing because I do have this view menu broken off, the lock camera attribute is checked because I checked it when I had that, when I was looking through this camera, perspective one camera. If I close this, go back to view, you can see it's not locked anymore. I can break this off again and it updates to the current camera. Cycle through cameras. If I click this, it will cycle through my front, perspective, top, perspective one, camera. So just click and go through them all. So and you can see the name of them down here at the bottom as I cycle through them. Let's get back to my perspective camera. So if, if I want to cycle through and also just keep in mind it does go through the front side and top and all that kind of stuff. So you want to get back to my perspective one which is still locked. I can go back to my perspective which is not and so on. So here we have undo view change and redo view change. Now, as far as the older view menu video, it used to be shortcuts were the bracket keys. And if I click those, it still seems to work the same way it was before. It'll undo my camera changes. But here it does the same thing. They have, just have new shortcut keys. So again, it's like undo just for camera movements. If I kind of spin around my cube like this in several different movements, since I undo, it'll spin back around. Or redo, it'll spin back the other way. So undo and redo, Alt-Z and Alt-Y are the shortcuts for those, or I guess you could also use the old shortcuts, which were the left and right bracket keys. 
and then default view you know if you get some kind of strange uh, camera view you can go to default view and it will bring you back home or alt home is a shortcut so you can view along axis this is also a new feature you can choose which axis you want to view along so let's just say let's just kind of bring this um, edge out like this so if I viewed along the Z axis which is what I'm looking at toward that right now I can say view along Z and see it I'm viewing along this direction let me go back to uh, object mode or I can view along the negative Z which is looking at the other way and I can still spin my camera around it's still a perspective camera it's just viewing it from a certain angle right away just keep in mind the difference between the looking at it from a positive angle or a negative angle. So view along axis is a very cool feature. So we have in the view menu, look at selection, but then we also have a new option called center view of selection. And at first glance, if I say, you know, select the cube over here and say, look at selection, my camera kind of moves and looks at the selection, okay. And I have center view of selection, my camera kind of moves and look at the selection. So what's the difference between these two options? And the difference is very subtle but I, there is a way I can show you. So I'm gonna to go to select camera right here. So I have the camera selected. So you see in the attribute editor, I have my transform attributes for the camera. As I rotate my camera around and move it around, you can see those numbers change. But if I select my cube, now I'm looking at the cubes numbers for transform attributes. I wanna look at the cameras. So I'm gonna say select camera one more time. And I'm, oh, down here at the bottom, I'm gonna say copy tab. If I copy this tab away like this, and then I have this right here. I can select my cube now, and you see this is my cube selected on the right, but on the left side though, I still see my camera. So if I rotate like this, you can see these numbers are still changing for my camera, even though I have the cube selected. Okay, so what we had to do was copy that tab over here just so I can keep it active while I still work on other things. So what I wanna direct your attention to is what happens between these two options here. Look at selection and center view of selection. So you see my numbers here, right here, translates numbers and rotation numbers. So if I click on this cube and say, look at selection, I want you to just focus over here as I click on look at selection. All right, did you see it? The rotate values changed. So my camera didn't move, the camera's position did not change, but it rotated around to look at the selection. And again, focusing over here, I'm gonna choose center view of selection. You notice that the rotation values did not change, but the movement values, the translate values did. So with center view of selection, again, I'll do it again. Look at selection, rotation values change, center view of selection, translation values change. So look at selection, the camera stays put and turns to look at the selection. But with center view of selection, the camera does not rotate, but moves to maintain the same rotation to look at the selection. That's the main difference here between these two. It's very subtle, it's hard. and if you're just clicking on it and not even thinking about it, it kind of looks the same. But that's essentially what's happening though. Look at selection, camera rotates. Center view of selection, the camera does not rotate and moves. Okay, that's the two main differences. I can close this now. So frame all, frame selection, frame selection with children. Those two options are highlighted green. So frame selection is essentially the same as it always has been. It maybe is has a different um, algorithm involved with how it frames things as to why it might be highlighted green. But for the most part, you press the F key and it frames just like it always has. I don't really see much difference there. I might have to look up maybe exactly what might be different as to why it's highlighting green. But there is this option for frame selection with children. So you can obviously have things that are parented together. Let me create a sphere. And over here in the outliner, I'm just going to middle mouse click on the sphere and drag it up to the cube like this. So now the sphere is parented to the cube. So when I select the cube, the sphere is also selected like this. So I can say frame selection and it frames the cube. But if I say frame selection with children, you can see it includes the children or includes the child sphere object in its framing choice. It will frame both of them on the, in the camera scene. 
So next we have Align Camera to Polygon. This is also a new option from the previous video, but not new to this version of Maya. If I would have to select a polygon and say Align Camera to Polygon, and you see, boom, it lines that face up with the camera. That's pretty handy. Let's go back to Object Mode. So predefined bookmarks, pretty much the same as they always have been, same with bookmarks. Uh, camera settings are pretty much the same. The camera attribute editor, if you want to click this, you go straight to the camera's attributes, just like before. Camera tools, I have a whole video series going over each of these um, on the channel, so please feel free to take a look at that playlist. I'll put a uh, link in the little I button on the top right corner to look at that. Image plane is still the same, and view sequence time is the same as always. So that's been the view menu updates for Maya 2017. Some of those things are pretty interesting, especially uh, aligning your camera to a polygon. That can be very interesting when modeling, uh, for sure. Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit about the view menu, and we're going to continue. I think we're going to uh, start looking at the hypershade here pretty soon. That's my goal anyway, uh, unless something, you know, for some reason I changed my mind. At this point, I think the hypershade is something I haven't really touched on much at all on the channel in the last couple of years since I've started. So I think it's going to be pretty exciting. We'll look at uh, materials, how they work. Might even look at Arnold, the new uh, Maya 2017 and forward or new renderer system. It's, I'm still learning it myself. This is new to uh, 2017 and plus. So yeah, it's pretty exciting. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and liked it. Please feel free to comment, subscribe. I really appreciate all your support. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please let me know. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later.